So we have already seen a couple of examples of mapping logical memory to physical memory. And virtual memory is just another example of that. This is very useful because virtual memory protects the memory of different processes against each other. It allows you to allocate way more memory and virtual memory also allows you to do things similar to shadow paging. But how does it work? How is virtual memory mapped to physical memory? That's what we want to explore in this video. So, the easiest idea you could think of is like you keep a table and you could just simply keep a table of the pages. So basically you have two columns. So one attribute is the virtual page IDs and the other attribute is the physical page IDs. And then whenever you're interested in a particular page, say 32, you look up that table and the table tells you, well, actually you need to go to physical page 56 and then you go to the page and that's it. But of course, it's a little bit more complex because usually a memory address is not only a page, it's more fine granular, usually down to one byte. You want to address a specific byte. So this means you need a prefixing scheme. So assume in this scenario that we only have 256 pages. 256 pages can be expressed with 8 bits, right? So 256 numbers can be expressed with one byte or eight bits. So a memory address has as its first eight bits the page number. And then following are 12 bits. Why 12 bits? Because I assume four kilobyte pages. Four kilobytes can be addressed with 12 bits as two to the power of 12 equals four K. So, a memory address that looks like that has as its prefix, that is a prefix here, the orange part, that is a logical page ID, which happens to be 32 in this example. Only this bit is set to 1. The suffix here is the address within that page. So, what does address translation do? Well, it has to look at the prefix only. The suffix is not changed. However, the prefix has to be mapped to the right physical page, which is 56. So basically, the physical address we're looking for can be computed by replacing this prefix with the prefix 56. That is what I did here. So this represents 56 as 32 plus 16 plus 8 is 56. So now this prefix represents the physical page 56 and still within that page it's the same offset. So this is computing the offset. Yeah, so you have prefix and suffix. Here the prefix represents a page and the suffix here represents the offset within a particular page. So basically what we do is we take the logical page ID translated to the physical page ID and all we need to do in order to achieve that is to replace the virtual page ID with a physical page ID. That is how address translation works. Well, keeping such a long table in my memory has its problems. It can become pretty big and therefore better ways of managing this mapping exist. I'd like to show the most important method here because this method is not only used in operating systems, but this method can also be used in databases to map logical addresses to physical addresses. And this is based on prefix addressing again. However, it has additional features. So what I assume here is I have a prefix of size two bits. So ad actually the addresses I'm looking at here consist of three parts. The first is this yellow part with two bits. I have two bits here. Then I have another four bits here. And I have another 12 bits here, which I'm suppressing. I'm not showing that. Those 12 bits here that I'm suppressing are, again, the offset inside a particular memory page. So I'm only interested in the following in this prefix because the prefix will be split up into multiple parts. Before we had a single part, now we have multiple parts. And what the first two bits signal are a particular region of memory. So I partitioned my physical memory into regions or segments. 
segments. So some memory segments. A segment is multiple physical pages. Multiple physical pages. In this example, I assume that such a segment here consists of 16 physical pages of size 4K each. So each of those green blocks is a segment of 16 physical pages. So how do I identify a particular page? Well, I first have to identify in this tree which is the arrow I should follow. And I have four options and which arrow to follow is signaled by the first prefix. So if this prefix is set to 113 in the decimal system, I have to follow this arrow. Then I still have 16 different pages. Which page should I go to? Well, that is reflected by the next four bits. Four bits can represent 16 different numbers. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So as here, bit number 4 is set to 1. Yeah, this is bit 1, 2, 4. So this is equal to 4. This means we're interested in this page. This is page 4 I'm interested in. That is the page that's, that's shown here. And then within that page number 4, there are 12 bits following that tell me which is a byte I'm interested in in that particular page. Let's do another example. Here the prefix is set to 00, zero which is also 0 in decimal. So here, that's that arrow, zero, we go here. We have to find the right page. That is page number two, actually. So that's this page here. So that is the page we're looking for. And within that page, then there's another 12 bits that represent the offset within that particular page here. That is how prefix addressing works in, in virtual memory, but also in other mappings. This has one obvious advantage, that is, you can move around those chunks that segments can be moved anywhere without changing the outside address. The only thing you need to do is you, you, um, you change this pointer. So assume that this segment sits at a particular address, say, whatever, physical address 42, 42. That is what this arrow reflects. So basically, this arrow is a mapping from 2 to 42, 42. This is a start of this segment. Now assume that for whatever reason you want to move that segment to a different place. So what do you do? You copy all of that to a different memory region, say whatever, 72, 72. Then you have the new mapping. But then the interesting question is what happens to the memory addresses? Well, the answer is nothing has to be changed. That is a cool thing because memory addresses to that page only contain this prefix 2, which means in binary 1, 0. That is a prefix all of these addresses contain, but the addresses do not contain the physical address. So they don't know anything about 42, 42 or 72, 72. That's not encoded into the address. So whenever there's a new lookup to an address starting with a prefix 1.0, you simply have to look up the new mapping to the new place, but you don't have to change any of those addresses. Not, nothing has to be changed. And that's a very cool thing about this prefix addressing. So, of course, if there's a one-level version of that, you can also do a multi-level version, and that's how that would look like. This has additional advantages, for example, only parts of the tree has to be present in main memory. You don't have to keep all the tree in main memory, depending on which processes are running. Different sub-trees of that tree are in main memory. Others just sit on disk and so forth. But the idea here is really the same as in the single level tree. So what you do is you look at such an address that you want to translate to a physical address and this left to right traversal corresponds to the top down traversal of a tree. So again, let's look at some examples. Assume we have a prefix one zero. This represents two in decimal. So we have to go down this arrow. Then there's a next chunk of four bits. Four bits again represent 16 different values. So now this year doesn't represent 16 pages anymore. It's a smaller 
node actually which only contains 16 pointers to another level of the tree. So as this points to one, we have to follow this pointer. That is the one pointer or arrow. We go down here. Now we already know we are in this segment. And now within these 16 pages, we have to find the right page. Well, which page is that? That is page seven, one, 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 four plus two plus one. That is page seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, this one, that is page seven. That's the page that's being addressed here. And then after that, again, there's 12 bits telling you the offset inside that physical page. Another example, again, it's actually a similar path in the beginning. So we have to go down this arrow, down arrow two. Then it's one, 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 this represents 15. 15, we have to go down here, we are in this segment. And within that segment, it's page number one. So this one, that is the page we're looking for. And again, we have 12 bits. I'm not showing here, but that's then representing the offset within that physical page. That is how prefix addressing works. So another way of seeing that is to say, this prefix tells you the path in a tree. It tells you which arrows to follow. And you just do that top down. The first bits represent the path from the root node down one level in the tree. And the next four bits tells you, okay, which is the next arrow to follow. It's basically a guideline how to traverse this prefix tree. And once you're at a segment, this number tells you the page inside the segment. And once you're in a page, the next 12 bits tell you what is the offset inside that page. That is how prefix addressing works. Of course, you can change all the uh, constants here. You can choose a different number of bits for the first level or for the second level, different page sizes, whatever, whatever, whatever. But the idea remains the same. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there!